What it do? Bad time crew. Hey man, listen, today I'm here to talk about UFC Perth. We know they're coming back to Perth later this year, and I think it's going to be a pay-per-view. I think it's going to be UFC 305. As cool as it would be to do another Miami pay-per-view, I think there's just too many big fights to make in Australia in the near like the middle to the end of the year in August. So today I've decided to build that card because I mean, I am the best matchmaker on YouTube, among other things. Um, humbly speaking, best editor, best purple belt. You know the drill. So let's get into this first fight on the card, opening up the pay-per-view. All right. I want to see Kai Kara France versus myself. I called him out in my UFC fighters that I'd spar tier list. Go watch that if you haven't. I called him out. It's time to end the grudge match. I mean, me and Kai Kara France, we have this blood feud, this incre like this incredible rivalry, this like DC Jones level uh, beef with each other. It's time for me to sort this guy out with a left hook. Uh, but all jokes aside, dude, that's kind of my catchphrase now. Urseg versus Kai Kara France. Banger, dude. This is a sick fucking fight. This is a sick fight. This is a sick fucking fight at flyweight. Um, Urseg, I don't think you're going to get Moreno, bro. I know I told Moreno to lock in, take some big fights, but I don't think he's going to be back for a while. And I don't think he's going to come back to fight Steve Urseg. I don't think he wants that smoke with my boy Steve Urseg. So I think Kai Kara France, who's recovering from some injuries, coming back in August against Steve Urseg. I wouldn't be mad at Amir Albazi versus Urseg. Winner gets a title shot. That would be kind of cool. But in terms of the region, in terms of who else is going to be on the card, I think Kai Kara France versus Steve Urseg in August in Perth would be a huge fight to open up the main card. You don't get a lot of victim weight fights that are actually exciting. This is one of them. That's my first fight on the card. Let's talk about the second matchup on the card. I've actually decided to go crazy with this pay-per-view and add the lightweight GOAT. The, that's right. The greatest lightweight of all time will be appearing on this pay-per-view. Mateus Gamrot, he's back, all right? Like I said, the lightweight goat is here. I genuinely think Gamrot versus Hooker would be a fucking banger, dude. I think this would be a sick fight. The scrambles would be insane because we have seen Dan Hooker scramble with pretty good jujitsu guys and do decently well. He does have good front kicks. He's going to keep you at the end of your punches. If you're getting dropped by RDA, I think Dan Hooker can make something happen. Plus, you know, if Dan Hooker is recovering from some injuries... Don't try and rush it, bro. Don't try and come back in fucking June. Don't try and come back in July. Wait a little bit longer. Come back in August. Give us fully healthy, blonde, covered in like scribble ta tattoos, Dan Hooker in his prime on the way up against Matea Scamrot. Imagine the reaction. Dude, imagine if this guy knees fucking Gamrot's chin into the third round. Into the third row, excuse me, sorry. Um, if this guy chins Gamrot's face off, with a fucking knee. The crowd's going to go mental. The UFC fan base is going to go mental. I think this would be a really sick matchup. I want to see this on the pay-per-view. Probably will headline a fight night in the Apex instead, but let a man dream, okay? And speaking of my dream, this is where it all goes down, bro. This is where, you know, the title run comes to an end. In terms of after this fight, my boy is getting the belt, all right? My boy is getting the fucking belt after he does this fight. Give me JDM Shavkat right now. I was going to say, let's make this the five-round co-main event, but I do have a better co-main event. I'm not going to lie to you. I do have a better fight made for that, that, that spot. But for the featured fight of a pay-per-view, I think JDM versus Shavkat is a big enough draw on its own to be like, oh my God, this is, the, this is the fucking fight. And then we've got two more fights after this. Everybody wants to see this. Um, I, I think JDM wins this. I know people don't agree with me that JDM wins this, but I just see him chinning Shavkat in the, like in close in the pocket. But fuck, man. Even if he loses, you know it's going to be a fucking war, dude. And I saw that JDM tweeted at him, W uh, JDM replying back to Shavkat. Bro, the tweet that Shavkat sent out, can I just say while I'm here? Bro, you're not Thanos, bro. You're not fucking Ultron, bro. What are you talking about? You, you will face the same fate as my opponents. Bro, this ain't fucking... Street Fighter, bro. What are you doing, man? You, you, bro, you, you broke your fucking ankle fighting Wonder Boy, dude. Chill out, man. But listen, Shavkat JDM featured fight. This is the this is the people's main event, dude. This is the streets main event. Give me this fight as the featured. Now, what is this co-main event? You're wondering. Is it Bedtime versus Lucas Tracy? Now, I want that fight to headline 300. I want that fight to headline a pay per view. But you know, the other side doesn't want it. In the meantime, a big fight that you can make for the Australian crowd. In the co-main event, maybe five rounds. That would be kind of cool. I'd be, I'd be happy with five rounds of this. It, even if not, three rounds of this would be sick. 
Here's the fucking thing about Whitaker, you guys, right, dude? He's a fucking scary uh, gamer, dude. He was talking about fucking jacking off when he finished at the fucking weigh-ins, you guys. I want Sean Strickland at this press conference with Izzy, with Drickers, because you know that's the main event. You know that's the main event. I'm going to talk about that after this, but, dude, imagine a press conference. Sean Strickland, Robert Whitaker, Drickers Duplessis, uh, what's the other guy's name? Israel Adesanya, all up there. That would be like a fucking COD lobby, dude. That would be like that video back in 2020 that was like the middleweight division is a COD lobby with like Paulo Costa arguing with Izzy, Till and Vittori screaming at each other. This is how you create that COD lobby environment that we need to sell pay-per-views. And aside from the, the press conference, aside from the build-up, Sean Strickland won the belt in Australia. He's got a huge fan base over here. Obviously, Robert Whitaker does as well. This is a very important matchup in the division as well because I feel like the winner of this does deserve a title shot. I don't think we should, see, we should see Hamzat in this spot. And I don't think he can even fight in Australia. And nobody gives a fuck about Kennedy, even though he's my boy. I think Jared should get the next shot. I don't, know, I don't think he will. He's probably going to have to fight Hamzat to get a title shot. Whereas Strickland versus Whitaker, big names in Australia makes sense. On the same card as Izzy versus Drickus makes a lot of sense. Interesting stylistic matchup, jab versus jab. I think Sean Strickland wins this, but it'd be a, a fucking good fight, dude. And like I said, five rounds or three rounds, I don't really mind. Obviously, you know what the main event is, all right? This main event is locked in like a puzzle. Trust. This is locked in like a jail cell. Trust. I want to see Izzy versus Drickus. It's time. Speaking of COD lobby, fucking hell. Imagine the slurs that are getting slung at this press conference, dude. That should be crazy. But uh, yeah, you have to do this in Australia. If you're not, because I just get the vibes. I don't know. You guys tell me. Dana White is like that girl that's like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll let you know when we're going to hang out. You, you're, you're never hearing a reply back. You're cooked. You're never seeing that girl again. That's what Dana's like with UFC Africa. He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're working on it. We're, work we're, looking, at, we're looking at places right now. Dana just opens Google sometimes and goes Africa and just looks at the map and goes, yeah, we're looking at places right now. Like that's, that's the most this guy's fucking doing with UFC Africa. So if you're not going to do it, put it in Australia, put it down under, put Whitaker versus Strickland on the same card. That makes a lot of sense to me. You've got JDM sharp cut there that needs to be made. Obviously, Steve Urseg is going to get a big fight on that card as well. This is just a no-brainer in my opinion. And in terms of picking the fight, there's two paths here. Either the world makes sense and Drickus wins because he's not been inactive since September 2023. He's fought back to back to back, beat Robert Whitaker handedly, beat Sean Strickland, quote unquote, beat Sean Strickland, if that's what they want to say. Izzy hasn't fought since he lost to Sean Strickland. And if he doesn't fight again until this fight, it'll be from September to August. That's almost a year out. At his age, with the injuries that he's had and stuff like that, you know, how active he's been, he's probably racked up some little injuries. I don't like that for Izzy. And I think Drickus is waiting him out for that reason, like, like on purpose. Either that happens, because the world makes sense, or UFC logic happens and Izzy chins this fucking guy in three seconds into round two and gets on the mic. I knew this was going to happen. I had to, put, I had to show him where he's from. I had to give, show him his blood so he could know where he's really from. Trust. I may not be from Australia, but I'm from down under and I'll put him down under. Trust. That's the, that's, you know, we're getting that dude. You, you just pictured Izzy saying that speech and the slow motion of him doing the Wakanda forever over Drickus's fucking dead body, dude. So those are the two outcomes, but I think this is a banger pay-per-view card. Izzy Drickus, Sean Strickland, Whitaker. JDM, Shavkat, Dan Hooker, Gamro, and Steve Urseg, Kaikara, France. I mean, that is a big, big pay-per-view. Realistically, we'll probably get Jamie Malarkey on the fucking main card opener, but let a man dream. Okay, now as for some prelims that I want to see, right? You have to talk about the prelims a little bit. You know, we need some good fights on here. One prelim I really want to see. This man's been trying to come back for three fucking, almost three years at this point. God damn. Brad Riddell, bring him back and give him Garam. And hear me out, hear me out on this logic. I'm a fucking genius, right? I'm a genius promoter. First of all, this is a banger matchup. Two very, very like, either you get finished or I get finished fighters. Like this is, this is going two rounds max. This is a sick fucking fight. You're welcome, right? Two guys that have been inactive for a little bit since their last loss. Obviously, Brad Riddell has been out longer. He's trying to come back now. He just had an injury. Couldn't fight Tiago Moises. But... Who does Guram train with? Hamza. So if Hamza comes with him, we could get a fight week where Hamza and Sean Strickland get into an altercation. Hamza and Izzy get into an altercation. Hamza and Drickus get into an altercation. You're fucking welcome. You are fucking welcome. I'm a genius. I'm setting up the next title fight. I mean, come on, Dana. Hire me, dude. All right. 
And uh, stop doing fuck it Friday, bro. No one cares. All right, let me move on to the second prelim that I want to see. Sorry, Dan. I felt bad, bro, because I know you care. Second prelim I want to see. Give me Waldo Cortez Acosta versus Junior Tafa. This fight was supposed to happen back at UFC 284. If you know, you know. I think this is a banger. I just want to see Junior Tafa KO this fucking blob, to be honest. And uh, guys, comment down below. Do you want me to do a blob tier list? Because I'm feeling like doing one. And I think Waldo Cortez Acosta, you're a prime candidate for S tier, buddy. This guy deserves to get knocked the fuck out for what he did to Andre Arlovsky. I think Junior Tuff is the man to do it. There's a bit of beef there. They were supposed to fight already, so you know that the UFC sees them on a similar level. And I think the winner of this can move on to some ranked competition because he only lost to uh, Rogerio de Lima and Mohamed Usman, two heavyweight goats, in my opinion. So I think this is a good fight. Obviously, makes sense with Junior Tuff being on the card. Um, if you can get Justin Tuff a fight as well, do that, but... I'm, I think he'll fight sooner than this card, to be honest. So that's why he's not here. Last prelim I want to see, if anybody gives a fuck. I want to see Daniel Rodriguez versus Kevin Jusay, bro. This guy's obviously training at a CKB. He might be the best fighter at a CKB at this point, besides Dan Hooker. I like Dan Hooker. Don't kill me if you see me. Um, dude, Kevin Jusay's kind of fucking good. And I think D-Rod recovering from that KO loss to Ian Gary. Bro definitely took too much damage because he's hanging out with Gary now. like. I'm praying for this brother because he's, he's, I, bro, he's going on an a Antonio Brown level run right now, teaming up with Ian Gary after that fucking fight that they had. But it is what it is. He's a good test. He's a solid, like, outside the top 15 guy. I think him versus Juset would be an interesting matchup with the boxing and the striking as well. I think this would be a good prelim to do for this pay-per-view. But let me know what you guys think of this card down below. What do you think of the main card? What do you think of these prelim fights? And do you want to see the blob tier list? Let me know down below. Speaking of tier lists, boys. When we hit 20k subscribers, I'm going to be dropping the impressions tier list with every single impression that I do. So if you're not subscribed and you want that, just hit the subscribe button, bro. Otherwise, drop a like, boys. Go follow me on Instagram at BedtimeMMA. I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.